Oh, hello everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you must be aware, I am running some videos uh, for my Power System Analysis playlist. Um, I have been working in in couple areas, and you must remember there are some classes, some videos related with power angle transition stability. Um, um, in those classes, I talk about the swing equation in order to describe the electromechanical behavior of the synchronous machine during that important period during the um, the um, power angle transition stability. Okay, and and today the session is a very short session because I will show you just a basic example, numerical example related with the use of the swing equation and especially uh, understanding the concept of the inertia constant, okay? And here there is a very basic example. Um, as you can see over here, um, the statement say consider a 60 hertz four pole generator rate 500 MVA, 22 kV, and has an inertia constant of H equal 7.5 megajoule per MVA, okay? And there are a couple of questions over here. The first one is probably very simple, but very interesting. That is determine the kinetic energy stored in the rotor at synchronous speed, okay? Uh, in a minute I will make a few comments, but inertia constant is very important. But the inertia constant is very specific when you are talking about a synchronous machine. Uh, in some cases it's better talking about the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is an absolute quantity that you can use to understand systems better than using the single uh, the inertia constant. Okay. Then there is a question B, you can see over there, there is a question B, and the question B say determine the angular acceleration if the electrical power developed is 400 megawatts, okay? This number over here is the electrical power, and that is 400 megawatts, okay? When the input less the rotational losses is 740,000 horsepower, okay? You must remember that here the input is the mechanical power, and that is the reason that we are expressing in horsepower. Horsepower is a quite used unit for uh, mechanical power, okay? In this case, we have 740,000 horsepower, okay? Okay, every one of my students, I, I believe that I don't need to t say that, but in my YouTube channel, there are many people and probably they don't remember the transformation between uh, watts uh, and, 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 and horsepower, okay? What you need to remember is that one horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts, okay? Well, let's solve this problem. This is something very basic, okay? Um, the first part is very simple, okay? Because all my students and everyone watching my YouTube channel, all of you must remember the definition. The inertia constant is the kinetic energy stored at synchronous speed based on the rate power MVA, okay? This is here on the right hand side, you can see the basic definition of inertia. In recent time, a lot of people talking about inertia and they don't understand the concept. Kinet uh, the, the, the real inertia, the, the, the inertia that we know in a classical sense is coming from the rotating mass inside the synchronous machine and that is the rotor. And when the rotor is rotating at constant rotational speed, synchronous speed, there are some kinetic energy stored over there, okay? From this equation over here, you must understand that 
we can extract the kinetic energy and we can see here the expression and is the kinetic energy multiplied by the rate power and we will get what we call the kinetic energy, okay? Here is the numerical substitution. The numerical substitution is very simple. We know here H is equal 7.5 megajoules per MVA. We multiply by the rate power of this machine, SN, 500 MVA. And what we obtain over here is 3,750 megajoules, okay? That is the kinetic energy, that is the kinetic energy stored in the rotor of this synchronous machine, okay? As I say before, many people confuse uh, inertia. Because inertia, in this case, is based on the rate power of the synchronous generator. But what will happen if you have many synchronous generators inside the power system? Well, each generator has each uh, rate power, and you will have a H expressed in each rate power. Then, if you want to calculate the total system inertia, rotational inertia, that is where people start to make mistakes. Because you need to refer all the inertias to the same base. And that is when people start to make mistakes. Using the total capacity installed or using the peak power and so on, okay? However, I will know here inside the problem of multi-machine inertia constant. This problem is a single machine. I just opening your eyes if somebody from consultancy or utilities are looking into my videos, okay? Kinetic energy is a better indicator. Why? Because kinetic energy is kinetic energy. And the total kinetic energy in your system depend is, is, is directly the sum of all generators kinetic energy. That is simple. That is plain. That is, that is something that you can use for comparison between systems. You have uh, some gigawatts per, gigawatts per second. That is the kinetic energy. Another system has less kinetic energy because they have less gigawatts per second. Okay? For instance, in Scandinavia, Scandinavia we can have 174, uh, 174, 120 gigawatts per second. That is kinetic energy. Okay? Okay, now, second question. The second question is determine the angular acceleration if the electrical power developed is. 400 megawatts and the input power less the rotational losses is 700, uh, 740,000 horsepowers, okay? As you can see, that equation is related with the use of the uh, of the swing equation, okay? That equation, that, that, that question is totally 100% related with the use of the swing equation, okay? Okay, now let's show you here my explanation. First step, it's very simple. The first step is that we need to know is, uh, we need to use the same units in, inside, the, inside the swing equation, okay? And, and electrical and mechanical powers inside this, the swing equation must be used in watts, okay? Megawatts, kilowatts, but watts, okay? In this case, what we are doing is uh, transforming 740,000 of horsepower, multiplying by 746 watts and divide by 1 HP, and we get this beautiful number over there, okay? As you can see over there, it's around five, uh, 552 megawatts, okay? The first thing that you must notice is that the electrical power, that is the output, is... 400 megawatts and the input power that is seven seven hundred and forty thousand horsepower is equivalent to 552 megawatts 552 megawatts what is the situation here well uh, mechanical power minus electrical power in this case they are positive acceleration okay why? Because the mechanical power that you put inside your generator is bigger than the uh, electrical power that you are delivering to the grid, okay? And now it's time to use the swing equation. That was what I was explaining, okay? In this case, this number over here, the mechanical power is uh, 552 megawatts. 
Here, the electrical power is 400 megawatts. The difference is a positive number. That means that the angular acceleration in this machine is positive and that represents acceleration in the synchronous machine, okay? Now, the problem is just making or including numericals, uh, numerical things, okay? As you can see over here, we have the inertia constant, we have two pi f, because we are representing delta in radians, okay? When we use pi f, that means delta is represented in, in, in radians, sorry, okay? And in this side of the equation, we are using per unit. That means 552 megawatts divided by the rate power, assuming the rate power as the A space. Okay, 500 MBA. Well, we have the numbers to put inside the equation, okay? A few, few calculations over there. It's just numerical, numerical stuff. Uh, any bachelor, any any engineer can do this. It's just just extracting the angular acceleration. We use the Greek letter alpha for the acceleration. And what is the number? Okay. As you can see over here, the acceleration, the acceleration in this case, we are talking about 434. We are sorry, 437. 437. Uh, degrees electrical degree per uh, per second square second okay that represent the angular acceleration the angular acceleration of this system okay the angular acceleration in this case as I say before we are talking about 437.8 degree uh, degree per second okay However, sometimes it's very important, especially if you are calculating mechanical efforts, eff uh, uh, stresses on the rotor and other components. Um, over there is also important presenting the results in RPM and, and also mechanical degrees, okay? Here, what I am doing is just using the pair of poles, okay? This machine has four poles. Four poles represent two pairs of poles. And using the equation, converting from the from the electrical uh, angle into mechanical angle, we obtain here the acceleration in mechanical degrees per second. Okay, good. And finally, finally, um, finally, uh, we have here the acceleration in RPM. As you can see over there, is thirty six point. 48 uh, RPM, okay? Now, an interesting question for an exam paper could be, okay, what's happening if this acceleration is sustained by two seconds? What will be, what will be the new angle for this machine, for instance, okay? Okay, I just noticed something before I close this video, before um, people start to fill up my inbox with emails. If we are using here pi f, the angle here is in radians per second, okay? And before people start to send me crazy emails, I would like to say that here we are using we are using 180 multiplied by 60, that is 180 multiplied by f. That is the reason that this angle is expressed in degrees, okay? That is, that is what I want to say before I close and I start to receive many emails, okay? Uh, well, this, this has been everything for this, uh, for this question. Extremely simple, extremely basic, but very illustrative. I highly suggest to my students and everyone that is watching those videos in YouTube, please try to be familiar with the physics. Okay, many people sitting at, at, the, at the office with the computer making simulations and they don't understand the, the physical meaning of the rotational inertia, okay? Many people talking about inertia, low inertia systems, but they don't understand that that represents, is, is one way to express the kinetic energy stored in the rotors, okay? In the rotors. Um, okay, that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Thank you. Bye now.